meeting to order for today, July 19, 2022. I ask Ms. Cindy to make a roll call. Mr. Richards? Present. Mr. Toller? Ms. Abrams? Here. Mr. Westmoreland? Present. Mr. Duncan? Here. Mr. Bush? Here. Mr. Moore? Here. Ms. Simmons? Here. Ms. Dominguez? Present. This time, I'd like to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and ask Ms. Janice to lead us tonight. This time we'd like to consider approval of the board minutes of June 21, 2022. Do I hear a motion? I'll make the motion. Motion by Ms. Sandra. Second. Second by Ms. Janice. Any discussion of the board minutes? There's none. Call for a vote. Voting is open. Voting is closed. Motion passes unanimously. All right, moving on to presentation. Presentation on the student insurance specifics. Mr. Snottlebach, welcome back. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, with us today, I have Ms. Carmen Bro, who's our insurance consultant, and Mr. Henry and Austin Powell, who are our insurance agents for our student insurance. At the finance committee last week, I think there was some discussion of our student accident coverage and maybe y'all would like to see a, a little bit more information of our schedule, schedule of benefits related with the student accident insurance coverage. I'd like to turn over to Ms. Bro, who's standing behind me and allow her an opportunity to explain this program for y'all. Thank you. Hi, good afternoon. Sorry I couldn't be in attendance last week for the meeting. Um, and I understand there were some questions on how the student accident insurance works. And so I'll try and explain the basics of it for you. And then if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer those questions for you. Um, this board in the past has always purchased a blanket sports policy that covered all of their athletes. Um, it also included coverage for the summer sport training and all school travel and extracurricular activities. And it's a very basic type policy. It is strictly an accident policy, does not cover illnesses, and it is an excess policy. So if a student has um, other health insurance, if a parent has primary health insurance coverage, that coverage is first, they have to file it with them first, and then file a claim with the student accident insurance, and the student accident policy will pay according to their benefit of schedules. It's not like a regular health insurance where they pay 80% or 90% or 70%. There is a specific schedule of benefits, and I think you all have that in front of you right now, a list of those benefits and the maximums that they will pay out. Another problem that um, I, I, I receive a lot of feedback on is the amount of time it takes to file a student accident claim. Um, you, when the, when the injury happens and the student goes to the doctor or hospital, wherever they go for treatment, they only have a certain amount of time to go ahead and file the student accident claim. And it's usually within 30 days of the accident. So what we try and tell um, all of our boards to let their principals know when they do their principal in services is as when the accident occurs, when the injury happens, go ahead and fill out one of those <coughs> student accident claim forms. Even though you don't have all of the medical records, all of the bills, all of the parents' explanation of benefits, still complete the form, sign it, send it home to the parent so they can sign their section of it too, and send it on into the insurance carrier. 
That way they at least have knowledge that there is going to be a claim and you don't run out of time in filing that uh, claim notice for them. And then it, if it takes 60, 90 days to get those medical bills into them, that's okay. They have the claim already, they've been notified, put on notice of that claim. Um, so that's usually the biggest complaint that we get is, you know, why my claim's not being paid? What did you file a claim? And a lot of times we realize that, you know, the parent thinks the school's filing it, the school's thinking the parent's filing it. So there's usually a breakdown in communication there, but if, if the principals would instruct their coaches to go ahead and complete one of those forms and send it in directly to the carrier, they can do that, and then the carrier will communicate directly with the parent after that point um, and take the school out of it. I'll be happy to answer any other questions you may have um, if I haven't already. Anybody have any questions? So it's more like an excess policy on top of your health insurance. Exactly, it is definitely an excess on top of your other. Now, if you don't have other health insurance, then this policy kicks in and acts as a primary. They will pay first dollar. But again, they only pay according to that schedule of benefits. They're not right. going to pay more than what's on that schedule. You know, definitely important that they have to be notified within 30 days. That's a kind of a quick turnaround since you don't get an EOB from your own insurance company for... Correct. That's why I say fill out those injury forms. It doesn't hurt anything. It's not like an auto policy or your liability policy or your property policy that you don't want to file claims because they, you know, count against you. Right. It does not work that way with student accident. Every little injury that happens, if the school would just fill out their little portion of it, sign it and send it into the carrier, that eliminates that running out of time and filing. Okay, thank you. Any, uh, Mr. One, one Bush? question, do, do we require our athletes to purchase a supplemental policy? Do we let them play without having insurance that will cover them? We require all our athletes to pay a fee <coughs> to the school. The schools are assessed a pro rata share of the uh, total cost of the insurance policy. The school, dish, the school board picks up about 40%. 60% is allocated to the schools, mainly junior high and high schools, even though there's coverage for our elementary students on extracurricular activities, but the junior high and high schools are being charged. And then the biggest fee on the allocation goes to the football programs, which bear the biggest um, burden of the expenses and the premium costs. So, and one thing to add, um, we do, and we've learned this many, many years ago, that uh, all our secretaries are instructed to file that claim form immediately, even without the parent's signature or parent getting and completing, because we have to stop that 30-day clock. So all our secretaries know that. Our risk manager knows that. They, she keeps it very, uh, keeps our secretaries informed exactly what needs to be done to make sure we don't lose the first part of the claim by not filing timely. Sounds and then good. one of the other things, that at the finance committee, there was a particular claim uh, one of the board members brought up. I talked to that board member followed up on the claim. I think um, we've followed up and found that the claim was about four years ago. It was prior to our current agent covering, and one of the issues what, after talking to the parent was there was limited coverage on ER coverage, emergency room type situation. The current policy we have now provides much more ER benefits than we did in the past. A couple of questions. Um, so, Mr. Schnaubach, how much are we charging for per student now? It used to be $20. Um, each school makes that determination. We don't tell the schools how to charge their, their students because we assess each individual athlete as a different individual. Some schools may charge a student one fee for all sports. You know, as far as we're concerned on the central office, we get our premium is based on the number of football players, the number of baseball players, the number of softball players, basketball players. We don't know if one player is playing all three sports or playing one sport. The school may have a fee for just one student for all activities, but we assess the school. The school then assess the students, collects the money in an insurance account, and at the end of the year, they remit the funds to the school system. Okay, that makes sense. And what, so this is strictly still only for athletic students, not just 
students? Well, the coverage is on all students. If they want to buy. All activity, extracurricular activity. For example, we had, many years ago, we had a band player playing on a stage, stepped off the stage, broke his ankle. He had coverage based on this policy. We never expected to see a band student get injured in an extracurricular activity, but there was student in coverage. We've had students involved in an accident and get, you know, they'd have coverage involved if they're on a field trip or something like that. But they don't have to pay though. They don't pay. Yeah, they don't We pay. assess only, only the on junior high and high schools based off their athletic sports. Okay, yeah. that's how, what, I just making sure it was still like I remember. Mr. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Bush. Uh, how many, how many uh, do we use average a year that use this policy? Curious. Um, Hundreds, thousands? Uh, And they're all different. Now, we all know the worst case scenario, right? Because this, we're talking really about the first level, which is up to 25,000. There's also a catastrophe policy here that goes from 25,000 up to, I think, a million and a half. Mm -hmm. And a million? A million. So, and we've had, we've had in the past 30 years, we've had a couple of students, we all know them, who've had catastrophe injur injuries, I mean, you know, life altering injuries that have gone into the million dollar range. So that extra coverage is vital to have that to protect the school system. Yep. All right. Thank you. I don't think there requires a vote, so we'll move on to consider committee reports. Thank you all for coming, too. Appreciate that. Uh, Capital Outlay Committee of the Whole, do I hear a motion to adopt? I'll make the motion to adopt. Motion by Ms. Sandra. Second. Second by Ms. Rose. Is there any discussion on the capital outlay? No discussion. I'll call for a vote. Voting is open. Voting is closed. Motion passes unanimously. Moving on to Finance and Audit Committee for July 14, 2022. Do I hear a motion to adopt? I make a motion. Motion by Ms. Robin. Second. Second by Ms. Janice. Do you have any discussion? Call for a vote. Voting is open. Voting is closed. Motion passes unanimously. Moving to Personnel Committee, July 14, 2022. Do I have a motion to adopt? I make the motion. Motion by Ms. Sandra. A second. Second by Ms. Robin. Have any discussion? Call for a vote. Voting is open. Voting is closed. Motion passes unanimously. Policy Committee of the Whole for July 14, 2022. Do I hear a motion to adopt? I make a motion. Motion by Ms. Robin. Second. Second by Ms. Sandra. Any discussion? Any question? Call for a vote. Voting is open. Voting is closed. Motion passes unanimously. Moving on to superintendent's reports and our recommendations. First, consider approval of the recommendation of the acceptance letter for the central office chiller replacement by Metro Mechanical. The superintendent? Yeah. That's for the chiller for this building, and we have a letter attached there. Um, saying that the completion, the substantial completion of that, and um, we're asking the board to accept that. Do I hear a motion to accept? I'll make the motion to accept. Motion by Ms. Sandra. Second. Second by Ms. Rose. Any discussion? Uh, I, have a, I have a question. All right. Why, um, why is the contractor submitting 
a letter that says that they certified that the project, they believe that the, pro that the project is su substantially complete. They've already completed it. They, they've already completed it. Yes, them. this is accepting their work. Okay, yeah, but they're, they're saying that they believe that it is substantially completed. That's what I, that's what I needed to know is, yes. is it done or not? Yes, <laughs> it's okay. done. All right. Any other questions? We'll go and call for a vote. Voting is open. Voting is closed. Motion passes unanimously. Moving on to consider approval of the certificate of substantial completion for the Perrin Eller, I mean Early Learning Center T1 building repair by Wainwright Construction LLC. Yep. Another one on your screen there that's a substantial completion to accept that building and the completion of that work for that building at Perrin Early Learning Center in Ponchatoula. I make motion. the motion. Motion by Ms. Sandra. Second. Second by Ms. Rose. Any discussion? Okay. Um, Go ahead, Mr. Brother, Jerry. Uh, yeah, so my question would be the same. Yes, sir. <laughs> it's, it's complete and same finished. Person, we've, our, 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 our building inspector has, okay. Yes, sir. This. Our architect has signed off on it and everything. Call for a vote. Voting is open. Voting is closed. Motion passes unanimously. Moving on to other board actions. Consider approval to publish a notice that the 2022-2023 operating budgets will be available for public inspection on July 20, 2022, and the public hearing will be held on August 23, 2022. Mr. Snodelbach. Yeah, Mr. Board President, y'all actually took this up in consideration at the Finance Audit Committee. Um, this uh, really the same thing y'all discussed. Ms. K. Roberts was here, presented the budget. Uh, it's only going to be at, we're asking y'all tonight to officially approve publishing the budget, put it on the website, uh, leave it out there available. We'll come back in August, present it to y'all again, get public input, and ask y'all to confirm the budget at that time. All right. Do I have a motion to approve publication? I'll make a motion. Uh, I'll second. Motion by Ms. Rose, second by Ms. Robin. Any discussion? We'll call for a vote. Voting is open. <clears throat> Voting is closed. Motion passes unanimously. All right. Consider approval of the resolution adopting the 2021-2022 Louisiana Compliance Questionnaire as a required part of the Tangible Parish School System's annual financial and compliance audit. Mr. Snodelbach. Thank you, Mr. President. If you all bear with me, I'd like to read the resolution. A resolution adopting the 2021-2022 Louisiana Compliance Questionnaire as required part of the Tangible Hoa Parish School System's annual financial and compliance audit whereas the legislative auditor requires that the Louisiana Compliance Questionnaire be completed by the Tangipahoa Parish School, Bo School System and adopted by the Tangipahoa Parish School Board, and whereas the questionnaire must be presented to the auditor at the beginning of the annual audit, and whereas the auditor will test the accuracy of the responses to the questionnaire during the course of his audit. Now, therefore, be it resolved, that the Tangipahoa Parish School Board does hereby resolve that the attached Louisiana Compliance Questionnaire for Tangipahoa Parish School System is and is hereby adopted. Be and in in is hereby adopted. I'd ask for a motion to approve the resolution. We would present it to the auditor at the beginning of this 2021-22 audit year, and they will audit the questionnaire's responses for its accuracy. Hear a motion to approve. I'll make the motion. Motion by Ms. Sandra. Second. Second by Ms. Rose. Rose. <coughs> Any discussion? Call for a vote. Voting is open.
Voting is closed. Motion passes unanimously. All right, moving on to board member comments. Uh, Mr. Bush. Also, you got any plans to uh, your dad retire and you take over the whole thing, or what, man? See it close? <laughs> I think Grandpa takes this thing forever, too. It's an honor to have you in our school system. I want you to know that. Uh, I see lots of our students traveling this summer, playing ball, et cetera. They're all making their way back to town, getting ready. So uh, just want to hope, hope, wish them all safe travels because there's ball tournaments going over all over the United States. I'm reading our kids are, are winning championships, and they're doing really well. Uh, so um, I hate to say it, but how many weeks are we away? Three? Three four? weeks. How many? Three. Wow. Uh Last thing is uh, Miss Silly put out a, I don't know if I can talk about this out loud, but she put out a text message about doing some spiritual praying for our school system. Miss Silly is the best text I've ever read of yours. But you know, that's what's gonna count. So if you hadn't seen that text message and look at our Facebook page, you need to go look at it. Cause uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna need a lot of uh, prayer this school year like we do every year. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Sandra. Uh I'm glad you brought that up, Mr. Bush, because that is the only answer, what she posted there. And we received lots of, of comments about it, and everybody realizes that, that it's prayer that's going to get us to where we need to be this, in our school system. Also, too, I, I, I had a few constituents call me about the safety measures in light of all the shooting across the country uh, for the fall now. So those measures that we spoke of, they're already out there to those that are in charge of making sure all that's going to be done. And do the parents, do, the, do, do our parents know that these are going to happen? Have they got word on the page um, that we're going to have these preventative measures? Well, we, I don't think that we've communicated those to families yet, but we will before school starts. And we'll make yeah. sure we get that information out. So they'll feel secure about the yeah. Problem. yeah. The other thing, uh, that, uh, too, last week we had an individual come about the Ponchatoula High School Vineyard uh, Highway situation on 22, and so we want to see if we can put that on the agenda for capital outlay, I assume, yeah, okay. so we can address that traffic flow there. Yeah. Yeah. Got your email about and that. And the last thing is uh, I had a constituent ask me about when they take their tests at the end of school, they, the kids watch movies, do we have any kind of a... a do you know what they watch? Do we know, is there any kind of a, do we have instructions for the kinds of things that they can watch those weeks that, those days that they watch them? We do? We have a, we have a the, so they, so the teachers realize what they can and cannot show. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there's a policy about what they can watch. I don't remember that, but I'm sure we have to have it. So I wanted to let her know that. Okay, thank you. That's it. Mr. Brett? No. Ms. Robin? Uh, we just want to say welcome aboard. We have quite a few new principals coming aboard, mm -hmm. especially at Independence and LaRonger, which is my district. So we want to welcome those principals and um, best of luck to the ones that left. We're going to miss them as well. But um, everybody's just finished enjoying the last part of your summer. And let's all try to put our best foot forward for the school year. We're going to cross our fingers. No hurricanes, no COVID, no nothing this year. Let's all say prayers for that. Amen. <laughs> That's right. Ms. Janice, you good? I'm okay. You good? good. Jerry, you good? All right. Well, I think uh, Mr. Duncan may have a motion for our next section. Move to enter executive session to consider the matters of Paul Drake uh, versus Tango Pair School System and to discuss the superintendents about it. All right. Now, here a second. I make a second. Second. Hey, Ron, I noticed this. Channel 17, proudly serving the Florida parishes. Next item requires no action. All right. So with that, the meeting. Public input, sir? No public input, so meeting is adjourned.